Here it is, the Australian Decode, New World Order and Dumbs, Deep Underground Military Bases. So I wanted to welcome Gene and, uh, and, and, and an Australian team. I can, can I use your name? <laughs> Yes, certainly. Okay, Amanda. Amanda, how are you doing? Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. So, so thank you for all your hard work on this. And I'm going to just hand this over to you and I'll just do color commentary while you, you and Gina read, etc. cetera. So, so, so yeah, and you're going to scroll through for us, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people tend to think that we are a little island in the South Pacific, um, that we're inconsequential. And I just wanted to really get it across to everybody that we've been right in the eye of the New World Order since the beginning. Because the British colonised, which is Cabal, colonised Australia in 1788. So that's 232 years of Cabal control. So just keep scrolling down there, darling. Yeah. So one of the traditions we have in Australia when we're having a meeting, it wouldn't be right for me not to do this, is that we do an acknowledgement for the country that we're on. This is in respect, a total respect. So the red is the earth that we're on, the land, the yellow is the sun, and the black actually signifies our original people. I just want to show you that where we are in, on the planet, where up to the north we have Indonesia, over on the right hand side we've got New Zealand, hello everybody. Mm. And then down, right down the bottom there, that's Antarctica. So we've got a lot to do with it. Yeah. All right. Big country. Just it's a really big country all floating there. And I'm just going to show you how big it is. Okay. We're not a little island. We're a continent. We're, we fit inside the US continental USA. And um, the biggest difference is that we have a difference in population. In the USA, it's 330 million. In Australia, we only have 25 and a half million people. And here we have, on the left-hand side, we have Western Australia, then we have Northern Territory. We also have South Australia. We have Queensland, New South Wales, and Victoria. And a little, that little island down south is Tasmania. Hello. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that Sydney, or Melbourne is the capital, but in fact, the capital is Canberra. Wow. And Canberra is within its own territory. Territories are under a different jurisdiction. So if you can think of Holy See, if you can think of the city of London, we have our own nation capital right there in its own territory. Okay, next one. Thanks, Rick. It's also known as the bush capital. And the name Canberra is an indigenous or original people's name for meeting place. And if you can see, we're sitting in our own territory right inside New South Wales, right between Sydney and Melbourne. So we're actually tucked in and tucked in. We're, we're an interesting little place, Canberra. Okay. So it houses, um, we've got a little bit of a link to the South Coast as well. And to the South, we've got the Snowy Mountains. So you can scroll down, thanks. Yep. As you can see there, you've got Jervis Bay, which is a military base for the um, Canberra. It's called the ACT, Australian Capital Territory and the Snowy Mountains. So it was founded in 2013. So that's 125 years after the British cabal assumed ownership of, ship of Australia. And one of the very little known, stay, really stay on that one, please, um, Rick, on the, 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 yeah, on the illustration, thank you, is that if it's very a little bit hard to see there, but if you can see the triangle there, you can see between joining three circles. This is really important because this same geometric shape, which is the pyramid with the capstone, is present in Washington as well. And a lot of people don't actually understand that Canberra was specifically designed to house the new world older. So wow. if you could just scroll down, thank you. Wow. And it, here, here it is today. You can see the triangle. Yeah, right. And I'm going to just, yeah, and I'm just going to show you through that. We've got all of the administration, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way through Canberra. And um, it was where they were going to take charge. So down we go. We could just move past those. Mm. We're going to be looking at those maybe in backstage. So it's just just through nine places, only a couple. So we've actually got our own Capitol Hill. 
the same as in Washington, and it is where we have a new Parliament House. And it was only opened in 1988. So just scroll down, and we'll just have a look at all of the symbology. I did did want to announce what you just said a minute there, is that after this show, those of you who have Backstage Pass, we will go into a little more detail on some deeper issues, some of those links, etc. So join us right after the show. I know we're not backstage right now because I wanted to keep this with just uh, Amanda and Jean, but we will be backstage after the show. So join us there for a deeper decode. Go ahead, Amanda. No problem. This is an aerial view of our new Parliament House that was built in the 1988. And it's in fact in the capstone of the Parliamentary Triangle. We all know that. It ha- if you look at it, it's got the Eye of Providence, it's got the horns, it's just full of symbology. That's just the outside. In- on the inside, it is just the- completely, absolutely completely filled with Masonic. We used to call it Illuminati, all of those sort of symbols. And if you go down to the next one, it's all sitting on an axis or different axes as well. And um, a lot of symbology. And if you scroll down to the next one, we've even got three-dimensional capstone going on with this parliament house that is a pyramid Mm -hmm. that is the capstone right there just to show you that it's not just made up there's plenty of people have researched this as well so let's go on down so now we're just going to be moving on to the um scroll down onto the australian eagle we call it the australian eagle because it's bizarre so it's it, it was between it's an american uh australian defense alliance that we've had for a very long time and it's an eagle of bliss and it's located in front of the australian defense headquarters so in 1948 the australian american association proposed to establish a memorial in canberra in the form of a monument or a statue and what what's just a shortcut that what's amazing is this is a theme within australia we have all of these alliances with the with US, which is the cabal, and the Australians pay for it. So, so I just want you to have a look at this crazy eagle. Have a little look here. Scroll on down. There it is, sitting in front of our defence buildings, and oh um, it'd be hard to see, but just keep going. That's just to make sure that you can see that it's actually real. That is actually. If you stop on that one, it's incredible because Canberra is so designed. There never, there was never any water. It was just a creek running through. What that eagle is looking at, it's built there before all of the building defence buildings were built. It's wow. looking straight at the old Parliament House. So it's like staking out their territory. So you can have a closer look now if you look at the uh, eagle. And as Jean and I um, said to me, he said that's, that Nazi eagle. That's the Nazism. Wow. <laughs> so it's a really tall. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep going. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. And we're just going to go to the next peak in the triangle, in the parliamentary triangle. And um, it's City Hill. And adjacent to it is, and you can scroll down. Um, adjacent and on each side, we've got all of the law um, centre and also entertainment centre. But underneath this, there's been a lot of ceremony on this hill and look at the symbology. And in fact, all of Canberra needs a big decode done on it, but uh, we'll just keep going. Mm -hmm. It's just to show you all that it's been going on in Australia for a long time. Now we're going to look at the old Parliament House, which is built in 1927. Look there in a paddock, in a field. What do you call it, Rick? (laughs) What do you call the field? In the middle of nowhere. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) On the the prairie. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, just scroll down. Where the Aborigines were, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think they, they did the, the, the dreadful thing that they did to every all original people. They poisoned the blankets, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's a it's a pretty grand building for just stuck in a in, in on the prairie, isn't it? So yes, we'll just go that and, is wild. Yeah. So there is a picture there of the old Parliament House is right in front of the new Parliament House. And it's, it actually forms another capstone. It actually forms a whole peak, which that pyramid on top is sitting right under the upside, upside down Y. Y is a symbol of the Rothschilds, as Jean has told me. And it's all over Australia. So let's keep going. Mm. And we're just going to have a look at this other really strange thing. And I want everybody to keep remembering this word, word called Telstra. It's our tele, main telecommunications network in Australia. So it was built, if we scroll down, in 1980. Have a little look when 
Canberra, its population was only 200,000. This is a massive tower from the future. Mm. <laughs> massive tower sitting on this mountain called Black Mountain. So it rises, it's a 195 uh, uh, metres above the summit. Interestingly, the mountain is quartz impregnated with sandstone. So as Jade said, there's a lot of Masonic symbol in that. Three, yeah. two, three. Yeah. All right. All righty. And this one is for, this one I really wanted to put in for Fiona Barnett so that everybody could identify with where she was taken on a plane with Nixon. So um, just scroll down. This is an old redundant former uh, rough base. As you can see, the other thing that's really interesting, look at all the golf courses that we're going to be seeing. It's quite profound. There's like 10 golf courses in this city, but that whole um, treat area was a bit of an exclusion zone. Mm -hmm. And um, that's actually where the airport is there, is uh, where that golf course is where uh, Fiona Barnett was taken. So let's keep going. Lots of symbology everywhere. And we're just going to keep going because there's a lot of... (laughs) Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, I just thought it looks like potentially an owl or something, right? Just, just looking at those two oh, things. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Who yes. knows? Who knows I mean, what's going on? It's like, wow. It's just huge. Well, it was all set with um, geometric design, et cetera. So mm-hmm. just to show you that we've had a lot of technology that they blank out from us as well. Um, if you just scroll down, we're just going to go to this other field. There's this little connection down on the coast. Even though it's an inland city, we have a connection down on the coast as well. Mm-hmm. So this is um, their telecommunications, etc. There's massive amounts of technology in Canberra. So scroll mm-hmm. on down. And it used to, you cannot see what's under that ground. It used to be a massive um, array, massive array, but you can't see it anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's our signals directorate. All right, so we're at back at the Triangle again. We've been on each corner. We've been to the Parliament House, which is at the base of the capstone, and now we're going to go straight across and up something called Anzac Parade to the War Memorial. Okay, scroll on down. This has been around since the, since the beginning of Canberra. As Jean said, it's a temple, and it's, in fact, celebrating war. So uh, we used to have it called. It used to be called the Department of War. Now it's called the Department of Defence. So defense. So mm-hmm. this is scroll on down. We'll get an aerial view. So we've actually got an upside down cross there, straight straight across to Parliament, across the water, Old Parliament House, and to the wow, hills. man, yeah. it's just loaded. All right. So the next one is something that grew up with everybody grew up with knowing this one so this is just a little out outside building that telstra has it's called the deacon telephone exchange but on a regular basis you would see uniformed um, defense military walk to the door take their caps off and go in which is signifying that it's a dumb and we all knew about it uh, and just through feedback from people um, it was a very very deep dumb there and um, also in all other places as well. So it's also the home of Echelon in Canberra, which is the big listening to everybody and part of the Five Eyes. So we're very part of the Five Eyes. So the entire care of Canberra is a dumb. Wow. What goes on under there is huge. We get broadcasted MK Ultra from the tower, mm-hmm. etc. cetera. There's, there's submarine tunnels underneath. Did you want to add anything, Jean? Um, I did notice that uh, a symbol I didn't catch uh, earlier up, but we can uh, do that later. Okay, great. All right, let's roll. Didn't interrupt any time, okay. Jean. <laughs> so one of the other parts of the whole uh, geometrics and symbology is that if we stand behind the War Memorial where that cross is, and we look down Anzac Parade and to over the old Parliament House, New Heart Parliament House then there's a line that we're going to draw. It's not north-south, it's uh, southwest. Uh, uh, yeah, the, whichever way, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, southwest. And um, it draws a specific line, and we were told that it, le- it pointed to Mount Bimberry, Mount Bimberry. And <clears throat> right that point that we've got marked there is actually the end of the Australian Capital Territory, and it becomes New South Wales. And we have a big range of mountains there called the Snowy Mountains. So it's in fact the, the pointing towards another massive dumb, absolutely massive. 
So yeah, it's the Snowy Mountains Range. It continues basically all up and down the, the, the east coast there to Melbourne. So it's about 170 k's plus long. And in 1959, it was decided to create power supply for the nation and the Snowy Mountains scheme was publicly commenced. Immigrants were brought in to work on creating a network of tunnels through the mountain range that created hydroelectric generation and irrigation. Dams were built, towns flooded just to create it. And so we've got some, uh, luckily we've got a few pictures. They're only little tunnels, tiny little tunnels. Keep going, there's some good ones. Massive. Yep. <laughs> Massive tunnels. I mean, we know that we're looking at dumps there. Now, this is the most beautiful tunnel I've seen. Look at the cathedral peaks. I mean, they really made it quite beautiful, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, that's a that's a dam wall, but it, it, it really reminded me of what a dam wall looks like as well. So mm -hmm. we'll keep going. So this is some of the technology that was created and with the idea of the snow hydro back in 1949, but it was totally completed in 74. I mean, that looks pretty, pretty uh, futuristic. Mm -hmm. And just to explain that it's, it, 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 it's such a big um, area for Australia to create this scheme. It was for irrigation on both sides of mountains, etc. But it's like 140 miles of tunnels. So that's pretty interesting. It's really huge. They pump water up higher and then it drains back down. People still have to pay for their for their electricity off that hydro scheme and the nation doesn't get the supply so gene would you like to add yeah on the uh that big project where they brought in the immigrants that's an old pharaonic trick is you bring in people that when they're doing you know they're building the the tunnels for the the hydro system to go through but they're also building other tunnels and so the the primary people working on the other tunnels are the immigrants that nobody's going to miss if they disappear at the end of the job. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so now we're going to move into the middle of Australia <laughs> to the most famous um, installation in Australia, which is Pine Gap. And it was, it's all about the Cold War in Australia, what happened after the Cold War. It just, we had such a massive influx of infrastructure, but all military. Um, and we'll see basically all, most of what we're going to be seeing is, is in fact been uh, really vamped up since the Cold War. So uh, we'll keep going. So this is just a little bit of writing from, from um, Tom Gilling and thanks to him. And this is what it looks like out in... Yep, just scroll down to the next one. Yep, thank you. So at the height of the Cold War, the chief of the Australian spy agencies joined the three CIA men at a remote site in central Australia to toast the success of a top secret project known the US intelligence circles as Rainfall. Um, okay, it's a really big installation, massively deep, as we'll find out. Okay, and that's just an aerial photo. It has a lot of antenna under the ground. So it's a CIA listening station. It was officially called the Joint Defence Space Research Facility, but it had nothing to do with research and was jointly in the name only. Australians were hired as cooks and janitors, but the first spies were all American. The hmm. job of the satellites controlled from Pine Gap was to eavesdrop on Soviet missile tests. While government ministers denied that Australia was a nuclear target, bureaucrats in Canberra secretly planned for Armageddon in the suburbs of Alice Springs. No longer just a listening station, Pine Gap was metamorphosed into a key weapon in the Pentagon's war on terror with Australia in frontline roles. Outside Pine Gap, there are 38 radar dishes pointing skyward, many of them concealed underneath golf ball-like shells. We have that all over Australia anyway. So Pine Gap is a multi-leveled underground facility maintained by the Club of Rome Military Industrial Complex. It is located near Alice Springs. It has mind-controlled military workers in upper levels. Lower levels are several levels of computer mainframes connected to the other main, major computer mainframes all over the world. A potential electronic control centre for the New World Order, Inc. Controlled by the Club of Rome and the Bilderberger Group, which is composed of 39 members at the core, 13 Maltese Jesuits, 13 Wicca Masons and 13 Black Nobility. Particle and 
dew weapons research genetics high level black ops 13 floors space tracking all right so we'll back but when we get to backstage we've got a little bit more there for everybody mm-hmm. so at this point that's that's just pine gap but uh, about 80 kilometers uh west there's another place called Mount Zeal, and we've really only got a photo of that because we have to go into it in backstage. So we'll just have a look at the, the mountain there. Yep, just keep scrolling. Thank you. So that's Mount Zeal, not far from Pine Gap. Keep mm. scrolling. Yeah, we've got backstage. <laughs> <laughs> backstage. Uh, we, can, we, can, we can read that, actually. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. we can read that. Yeah, according to my NSA contact X3 that Mount Seal underground facility is the twin facility to the Pine Gap base in Northern Australia. The following is part of an eyes only document that was given to me by X3 regarding Pine Gap. Pine Gap, Alice Springs, Australia. This base is a massive multi-level facility run by the 33rd degree of Zion, which fronting as the Bilderberg organization is the control and command center with the Rothschild apparatus Illuminati. Pine Gap is a major control center for the New World Order dictatorship and is equipped with levels of computer terminals tied into all the major computer systems. All right, so this is the base called, that is called Exmouth, uh, the Dumb, sorry, but it's actually a complex and it's called Northwest Cape in military terms. And we'll just have a little bit of a zoom in on the next frame. Thanks. And a little bit further in now, just, just so that you know where we're going. So we've got three installations here across 50 kilometres. Jean, you can translate that to miles if you don't mind. 50 kilometres? Yeah, I think it's like about 30 something. Yeah. So it's a 30 kilometre length. And so we're just going to have a look at the three installations. So we've got RAF, we've got um, a basis. So Limonth has been around for quite some time. It's also joined with the civil one, yeah, as well. And if you go down to the next one, you can see all the symbology in it. We've got the owls, the mask, all of that. They always always have that, don't they? Yeah. They're they're into their owls. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And then we've got like a, it's quite a complex, because Exmouth is what it's called, but it's in fact Northwest Cape. So we've got base and array. You can see there, and it's part of the mutually assured destruction policy during the Cold War mm-hmm. created. And all of these are all in all in um, symbiotic use with the US military as well, cabal slash cabal. There's a lot of communication, command and control um, in this, this area. Yeah. Did you want to add to that, Jane? Yeah, my math was decent off the fly. It's 31 miles. 31, you're very good. (laughs) All right. (laughs) So it's all about, you know, under the water, on the water and in the air, from the air. Mm. This is a huge area. So that's just the array. It's, it's, you know, (laughs) Gene, you can talk about this because you know what this is all about. Yeah, so this is a, what's called a VLF, uh, very low frequency. It was used, uh, it's used to extremely low frequencies to communicate with the submarines when they're underwater. Um, in, for example, if there was a nuclear war to give information of all of the satellites and all that's been taken out, this is a system where they can communicate and, and coordinate a missile launch or anything else they need. Um, mm. But also this very low frequencies carry much further. And so it's also used for um, communications uh, high up above the earth. Just put it that way. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <On> front stage. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next one, which is a bit further north. Before, yep, down to the next one. So this was, is the Harold Holt Communications Station. It's a little bit hard to see there, um, but it's got a lot of geometrics and, um, and in fact, Jean has to comment on that one. Jean, what, that's another array, isn't it? Yes, and that, um, you can again see the uh, stars which are, again, uh, in this case, being used in a satanic fashion to, uh, for symbology and to draw power to the area for the dumb that's underneath. Mm, absolutely. And it interferes with our Bureau of Meteorology's radars as well. So let's keep going. We've got lots to get through. 
Okay, so yes, it's all about space warfare. So that's Northwest Cape, about 50 kilometres of, of Dum. So let's go on to the next one. So we're going down to the Nullarbor. And um, Jean's info is that we were looking for our anti-gravity um, station there. So it's just the most incredibly big area. And we'll just go down to the next frame. It's got three different things. It's got Maralinga, EMU field nuclear test sites and Woomera prohibited area. You can see the red square there. Inside of that, we've got a lot going on, a lot going on. Now, I don't know if a lot of you know um, whether that we export uranium and this is where it comes from. So this is Maralinga. You can hardly see it. It's so hard to get photos because Australia is so vast. It's very hard to get to. But at the top there, you can see the sort of splat marks. That, that's where they detonated um, nuclear um, bombs. So this is a great big testing site. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just an airport. Look at that lovely big airport in the middle of, an, of uh, this area. Right. Which, Huge airport yeah. right area. Yeah, there's loads of them. And so this is Emory Field as well, which is they did all of the testing. So, I mean, the British cabal detonated seven atomic bombs between 56 and 1963, and one was twice the size of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. So, I mean, they've really, they've been mucking around in this area, blowing things up for some time. And this is off a government website, this next frame, and it just shows you that this is the part of the Woomera range. So that means that they prohibit you from going on there. It's huge military installations. Mm -hmm. So we'll just go down a little further because we've also got in the same area, the Woomera prohibited area, and just scroll down a little bit. And they still close it off. So you can see that line that's going from the orange one that's going on an angle on a diagonal. It's actually a firing range that goes from Woomera, which is right there on the right-hand side, all the way over past Broome, which that distance is I think the same between England and Broome is on the west coast of Australia, which is the same distance between England and the and Russia. So it's like, I mean, we're talking massive missiles and all of this sort of thing. But inside you're allowed to, some people can do mining. And uh, just above that red area on the right, you've got um, Olympic Dam and Roxby Downs, and that's definitely, that's uranium mining. And the only port in Australia that can export uranium is Darwin. But anyway, so we've got a massive area there that is prohibited. So one of the one of the trials that they were called minor ones was when officials deliberately set fire to or blew up plutonium with TNT just wow. to see what would happen. Gene, have a say. <laughs> yeah, so um, we have an expression for upper level in, in SSBN's uh, upper level missile compartment watches that if they find a ruptured, um, the nose cone of, a, of the missile has been ruptured and the plutonium canister inside is ruptured. If they can, they go on the 1MC and alert everybody. And what they do is they say, grab knees. And so um, that's an expression whereby because plutonium is so poisonous and so fast actingly poisonous, it's the one of the most lethal, most toxic substances known to man. So all you have time to do is bend over, grab your knees and kiss your bum goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so they've been mucking around here in, in Australia for a really long time. So just scroll down. Yeah. And uh, by the way, they took about one foot of landfill and covered that area completely over where they blew up that plutonium all over mm -hmm. the place and gave it back to the uh, original Indigenous. natives for property. It's, it's just incredible. It's and just that, incredible. Yeah. And the half-life of plutonium is about 150,000 years. Uh, the toxicity won't be gone for 150,000 years. You dig a foot down and, and you're going to be gone. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this, yeah, this is Woomera base, RAF base. So Woomera, you, you know, I showed you the state of South Australia with the red square. This last, the last, gra gra uh, where the range sits, it, it sits in inside that red box. It is 122,000 mm -hmm. square kilometres or 47,104 square miles. Would you say that's big, Rick? Wow. 
That's it's crazy. huge, <laughs> absolutely huge. Yeah, so they've been able to get away with a lot, and they can just shut it down and say you can't come in anytime they like. Scroll on down. So Woomera Range Complex comprises both of the Woomera Test Range and the RAF base in Woomera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've just got lots of unusual, <laughs> crazy installations in that area wow. with the symbology. Yeah. yeah. And the next one, can you see the sort of staggered steps there? Yeah. That's the, that's the Woomera firing range. That's where they've, they've got silos there, I'd say. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we go just go down to some of the rather small mines that they've got. These are huge mines, huge. And you can see how deep the holes are. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just we're back to um, just that square again because that's at 122,000 square kilometres. It fits inside that orange square, but there's the other little joint defence facility at Narunga. So let's have a look at that. It's about 15 kilometres south of Woomera, Australian Department of Defence, again, United States Air Force from 69 to 99. So let's just have a look at that. It's just a little station. It's just a little station, but if you scroll down to the next page, you can see what's on the left there. Hmm. Gene, are you there? Yeah, that's called the Tau Cross. It also represents the Spear of Destiny. And the Tau and Cross is the cross of Satan. It is a, um, if you remember my decode on Washington, D.C., you can see it in there, um, part of the symbology in D.C. It represents the broken cross or um, the taking down of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ by the cabal. They're saying they're, they're making that null and void. Wow. That's pretty uh, bold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not going to be pretty for them. <laughs> Not nope. going to be pretty for them at nope. all. So we were looking for an anti-gravitation um, facility, and I think we might have found it. So now we're moving over to the state of Queensland on the far right there. To um, We're just going to scroll down. Yep. And if you go from the top of the page right down at the bottom, there's there's a little area there called Black Mountain. And this is what it looks like. It's a most unusual place. It's about 16 miles from Cooktown. The nature of the bizarre mound certainly makes its appearance conducive to scary stories and myths. From a distance, Black Mountain looks like a solid monolith of black looming over the primeval forest around it. But on closer inspection, one can see that in fact it's gigantic granite boulders, many of which measure up to 20 feet long and soars up 900 feet over the surrounding landscape. Uh, there's a reason for it, which is its distinct black colorization caused by a thin coating of iron and manganese oxides, as well as a film of blue-green algae covering exposed surfaces. Black Mountain has been ground zero for a wide variety of high strangeness. It's said that animals are spooked by the mountain and that it exudes some evil force that has been reported to disrupt the navigational equipment of airplanes flying by. In fact, planes mostly avoid flying near the mountain due to these unexplained anomalies. Okay, and now we're going up. It's the state, it's the territory that Pine Gap is in, and we've got a massive dumb in Darwin. Hmm. So we'll just scroll down. And we're just going to look at that area right in Darwin, just to go down. We've got a few military bases there. Robertson Barracks, um, built in the 1990s, okay. And if you start looking for the golf courses, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> There's golf courses, everyone. Just scroll down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to move a little bit further north than that. That's, that's an installation that's actually at the barracks, lots of telecommunications going on. We scroll down, we're just moving a little bit north from that base and it's called Shoal Bay Receiving Station. Looks a little bit like Pine Gap, but not quite. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, of course, they've got to communicate. It is it is the defence line for Australia. Mm -hmm. Okay, down we go. And this is where our the your US Marines, etc., and troops come and stay in Australia when they come over and train us, etc. Mm -hmm. Been around since 1940. And uh, this is the military, um, sorry, Kunawara, so that's Navy. 
You can see the owl sideways if you look hard enough. Mm. You can see the little ear. <laughs> All right, then. We just keep wow. going. Yeah. Whole, Symbolism yeah, will be their downfall, mm. right? <laughs> Mm. Been around since 1935. Mm. So we've got quite a few installations all through the Northern, Northern Territory. Just wanted to show you them. We can just scroll down and have a quick look at them. So that's a raft based Tyndall, Mount Bundy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just really big installations. We've only got 25 million. This is a massive, massive range coming up as well. 9,000 square kilometers, so three thousand five hundred miles squared mm -hmm. all right they're just they're just huge huge ranges you can see from the top there they're just plotted out there for you so keep on going down it's just the fun that the things you find when you're looking mm -hmm. so this is delamere which is huge it's for four thousand four hundred miles squared it's a really huge base not that part there it just this is what you find on it you can see all the symbology there it's a massive range Let's move down. We've got a really good one. Can everybody see the eagle has landed? Hmm. Great big wings. All the symbology there. Yeah. Incredible. Okay. And of course, we've got another installation near Alice Springs called Jean, which is a massive array as well. And I just thought I'd pop that in just so that it, it, it closes the loop. Mm -hmm. Looks like heart facility. It's been yep. around for ages. Yep. Did you that's not want to speak to that, heart, Yeah, that's a heart facility that was yep. low. Um, you're working with the U.S. to control the entire Earth because you need one on each side of the equator to be able to control the entire yep. Earth. And mm -hmm. um, like Canberra as well, it was tied to the free energy system with um, the Falklands. Wow. Yes. Mm. Okay, so now we're just going to go to Western Australia again. And um, it, this is just a quick ad that we just did yesterday, Jean. Um, Geraldton is, is another place that has a bit of activity, you know, off from the ocean onto land. So if we just have a little look at the next photo, thank you. We've got another mini pine gap here. It is the, it's our signals. It's called Kajarina. It's got... It's our Australian Signals Division. So we're talking five eyes here. We're talking, you know, <laughs> good spy centre. Yeah. So you can see all of the dishes. It's, this is also Echelon. Pine Gap's Echelon, Canberra's Echelon, and so is this place. I'm sure we'll find more as we go along. Shalom is what? what? Sorry? What is a Shalom? E e echelon is a listening. It listens to all of the phone calls it translates oh, okay. it. It pings what if people are saying keywords, et cetera, et cetera. That's like and, five um, eyes and yeah. It, yeah. Well, they do it on us as well in Australia. I always have done, and um, it, but this is for looking at you guys and your phone calls as well. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the massive installations underneath it. They can put a lot of facilities up when they don't have that many people, right? <laughs> exactly. Thank you. That was that's my point. Exactly. Exactly. And and Jean gave me intel that in this, just lower down the next one, from the installation that we just saw, we went out west and had a look at that place, and it looks like there's a massive dam under there through the lake. Um, to the left but anyway do you want me to come you? up here yeah go back to that one thanks okay, so yeah okay. so that's actually a lake which tend to be salt pans in when it's the dry season and um over just down below it's called painesville to mm -hmm. black range and when it's got an x in front it's, it's been explored it's exploration and massive mining because one of the things that a lot of people uh, if you remember back to the plan for the new american century the plan was to turn uh, Australia into mining and tourism and military, obviously. <laughs> so, yeah. So there's another arm. Um, so Jane, over to you. Yeah. So what they do is they tie the, um, it's a perfect location, a salt pan, just like they did with Dugway Proving Ground, um, uh, Los Alamos. When you have these salt pans, it's a very easy way to create a dome in which you can have a big, huge entrance 
they uh, open the doors, the sand cascades down, they can drive in, fly in, whatever they need to do, go into the dome, and then you have another salt pen up northeast of this one. So you have two ent an in uh, easy entrance exit. Then when they're done, they close the door and they have big, huge fans that take all of the sand and blow it right back up on top. So it looks just like you see it now, undisturbed, just a salt pan, nothing here, nothing here to see. <laughs> and so this is a massive dump between these two big salt pans. Now you were saying, Gene, weren't you saying that this underneath Australia, this is like a huge amount of dumps even compared to the, the United States as far as? Yeah, it's like what they found when they went into Melbourne. Um, they were expecting to, the Marines helping, you know, teaching the Aussies military to how to take them out, figured that it would be done in a week. And what they found down there was level after level of things connected that they thought they had New Zealand done, and it connected to New Zealand. They found more stuff under Christchurch in New Zealand because of the dumb going from Melbourne and there's so many levels that, I mean they call it the arachnid because it's like a spider web it just webs out and these constant um, arcing tunnels interconnected with radial lines of maglevs and so you've got all of these huge radial tunnels with maglev trains going out in a huge arc that eventually gets all the way out to where it goes all the way around in the continental shelf of Australia. So the entire thing had a maglev going all the way around in the continental shelf and they had to take that out first. They knew about that. But when they got into the um, Melbourne, it, they, it's, they're still going and it, it's been a, quite a long time now. It's way, way, way past a week. Just scroll um, down, Rick. Wow. Here we are, Melbourne. Mm. <laughs> there you go, Gene, talk about it. That people will know where it is. <laughs> so that's Melbourne and the number of um, young ones. I won't use things so this doesn't get taken off YouTube immediately. But the uh, the uh, young ones, uh, shorter people, <laughs> you know, little pe little people, uh, are that are being mm -hmm. rescued is isn't a number so vast that if I say the number, I mean even with what I said in. Um, if people remember what I said for China Lake, multiply that by ten. Okay. Wow. So what currently has happened here, and the number is still going up, and they they estimate it to be it'll be that number plus times three again, and so you know what's coming out of there is so horrific, and what's under there is so horrific um, because, for example, you know, remember I said they brought in the immigrants to work on the tunnels well they brought in uh, for that hydro project and then they dig secret tunnels and they just if nobody's going to miss them and their family they just disappear at the end of the project and so they're taken into these dumps same thing goes with uh, the original peoples they they wiped out the majority of them but they took their children first and so they've had them down there for hundreds you know their progenies on and on and on generation after generation since the british wow. came to australia and started building this that far back wow. so you know they didn't have the tech we do today but they still had the labor force they had the the funds of the gold and the and the diamonds and things that pe very few people realize that australia has and they've been looting that and taking that uh, for a very long time as well as all the sacred things of the original peoples as well and taking that back to their vatican dome and the, underneath the tower of london and underneath uh, westminster abbey and underneath the the uh, the palace and so they've had over 200 years of generations to continue this even if it's manual labor you can imagine what you can do with that kind of labor force of you know down there all that time and under your absolute power and control wow so just like what i read with the cecil Rhodes and what he did to africa when they took all over africa it's like wow this, yeah. This, did yeah with the war wars and all of that exactly mm -hmm. and then this actually is so convenient because it goes straight from the the you know the islands up north through new zealand and all that arc coming down from the Philippines and all of that, mm -hmm. then it arcs and you go into Tasmania. So from Hobart, there's a dumb under that in Tasmania. Mm -hmm. And that pretty much the whole island is, you know, not that high population. So it's very easy to have entrances and exits and make that a vast dome. And that thing gives you direct access to head into Antarctica. So right, it's right, very, very convenient mm. for the for the cabal.
Yeah. Very convenient. Yeah, very. All right. So we just had the only intel we had was that the dam was about 40 kilometres from Melbourne Centre to the Dandenongs, which puts it at that yellow dot. It's called Sylvan Reservoir. So if you just go scroll down, it's just a massive reservoir. Well, they mm. like water bodies because they can enter and exit. Um, and just scroll down a little further, thanks. And um, just a little bit further south from that yellow dot, we've got, love the person. Thank you so much, team, for this bit of information. The blue dots on the right represent 10 illegal properties owned by the Rothschilds. Mm -hmm. The little sort of magenta line is a puffing billy train, a family ride. And dotted around, I haven't completed this decode yet, but I've seen a couple of very interesting spots that those blue points um, represent, a kiddies camp, etc. One of them is where uh, the Queen Elizabeth stayed, which of course where we were, we've been under the Queen Queen Elizabeth all this time, um, and she stayed here. It, it in the forest. That's all forest, all forest. So it looks like a hunting ground. It's like the Black the Forest great... of uh, Germany, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're all Rothschild properties. Mm -hmm. Isn't that incredible? That's creepy. So I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then you've got the whole network that's going underneath all of Melbourne, you know, their, their walk through tunnels plus all the maglevs through. It's just an incredible hub. Wow. All right. Yeah. And yeah. you know, think Rothschild in a forested area, think hunting, yes. lodges. think hunting yes. lodges like we heard yeah. in the Black Forest. Yes. And you've got dumps, so you've got a perfect place to bring children, and then you've got your hunting lodges. Wow. Yes. Yes. Sickening. So just scroll down, um, scroll down a little bit further. We're just going to Tasmania, which is the island that uh, Jean was talking about, and um, just apply everything. There's not that many bases on it, but there's a lot of activity that goes on entering. It's it's it looks like it is a dam, hmm. a complete dam underneath. And we're off to Sydney, which is the latest bit of intel, isn't it, Jean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. There pretty much Melbourne, you know, their mop up stage. So now we're Sydney full out. Okay, just roll on down and I'll just t tell you about it. So if you can see where on the right hand side where Port Jackson is, that's Sydney Harbour where the Sydney Harbour, famous Sydney Harbour Bridge is. You go down south, there's Botany Bay. That's where Captain Cook put his rag in the sand and de declared this a cabal country. Hmm. So just up the river, up that very same river, is this massive pocket of forest mm -hmm. which holds a Holsworthy base. And across the road from that is Lucas Heights, which if you scroll down, I'll show you a couple of pics. So you can see it's a very forested area. Um, yep, so it's 22,000 hectares. So that's 54,000 acres <laughs> of military area. Wow. See, this is what they've done in Australia. They've They've captured the top layer as military research or whatever. So just scroll on down. See, it's been there since 1880. Incredible. Just the installations. Yeah. But I laughed and I'm sorry, but I felt it really purifying to find out that, that three, well, how much? 3,800 hectares and then 2,700 hectares of it burnt down in 2018. Hmm. Nice, nice job. So you can see is that where the road is. Can you see Heathcote Road there and trace it out? Heathcote Road on the right, it swerve curves through the centre. Right here. From the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the centre. So Heathcote Road is the swirly road. And this road coming around Holdsworthy Base mm -hmm. is where Fiona Barnett used to be taken in through gates onto Holdsworthy Base. Where they tortured her, etc., ah. and they altered her. And where there's the, you can see, you can you point out where that Lucas Heights is in the middle of that. It's sort of yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah, that there. So it's right across from this whole Holesworthy base. So we're just going to have a quick look. Mm -hmm. Scroll on down. So Lucas Heights, you can see a little bit of a closer version there. We've got whole tailing field, 
etc. Mm -hmm. Now, in Australia, we've got the same problem as everywhere. They put research on it and they're protected. This is a massive research area that needs a decode in itself. Um, mm -hmm. Our first nuclear um, reactor was here. It's been decommissioned. But um, they do all of the um, nuclear medicine production here. So they yep. first had the high flux reactor there. Um, and that was in 1958. See, they've been here for a long time. Yes. <laughs> and We're not just a little Amanda, island. Are you familiar with the history of Botany Bay? Uh, uh, with Captain Cook putting his dirty rag on the sand. Um, he, they actually bought a load of prisoners in and sacrificed the entire boatload satanically to sanctify that ground to Satan. And so that's why this Holdsworth base and all of this is here and why that's a primary Mark Ultra for all of Australia. And that, you know, why they're expecting Sydney to be possibly worse than Melbourne. And that's why Fiona mm -hmm. Barnett was taken there because this is sanctified as unholy ground, uh, holy ground to Satan, unholy ground for any of those yeah. that follow Jesus Christ and, and the one true God. Yeah. Yes, well, just scroll on down there. Wow. Thank you. So that's a reactor, you know. We're quite modern here, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, of course, it, it always goes on. I mean, you know, that, there's a synchrotron. They do uh, cyclotrons, et cetera. But these are joint facilities in Melbourne. So it's all connected. And that's just the inside of the new reactor. And, um, you know, we've just got high technology under the banner of research. So it's called opal. Of, well, of course, everybody knows that opals are one of our beautiful stones that we have here. And here they go and take the beauty and turn it into something else. Yes. And um, that's Australia Decode, everybody. I hope that um, it was my gift and my privilege to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, thank wow. you, Amanda. This is so beautiful, the work you've put together here. And thank yeah. you, Kay, for bringing Amanda and your team together and uh, – getting Amanda to and helping and bringing Amanda into the team to do the, such a beautiful decode. I mean, this is the most awesome decode I've ever seen. Thank you, Amanda. Yeah. It's incredible. I'm That's doing it for the, I'm doing it for the children. 